Hello, welcome and behold this SSTO video. This is the debut of the mighty Artemis class of SSTO, which is the replacement for my uh, tried and trusted, uh, trusted, <laughs> trusted Argus class. Now, right off the bat, I'm just going to say if you want to watch this video without my voice and want to see a more condensed music video like my traditional style of space plane videos then there is a link in the description uh, to take you there and also in the final 20 seconds of this video there'll be a link on screen as well but uh, yes anyway uh, for those of you unfamiliar with my SSTOs I have sort of three main classes which are the Phantom which uses Mark II fuselages then you've got the Argus which used a Mark III fuselage and now we have the Artemis which is a triple mark 3 fuselage body and as you can see it is an absolute juggernaut of a space plane we have 16 rapiers six nuclear engines two turbo jets 14 shock cones nearly 45,000 units of liquid fuel with a smidge over eight and a half thousand units of oxidizer on top of that so we are gonna be taking this thing to the mun with our crew of 60 kerbals um, some of you might be wondering, or might be wanting to point out that those three uh, Mark III passenger bays don't actually have the capacity for 60. Uh, there are other Kerbals hiding away in that fairing though. So there are 60. When we do the EVA, you can count them if you want to. And then feel sorry for me as it took me a good... It took me a good 15-20 minutes to get them all out on EVA and my computer is pretty good but the frame rate was... The frame rate? <laughs> can't get my words out. Uh, the frame rate was pretty shocking when they were all actually on the surface. But uh, here we are just pumping the fuel from the peripheral tanks, i.e. the ones in the wings and in those... Uh, the engine blocks uh, into the central tanks where all the fuel lines are connected so um, that's why our delta v is currently increasing it's because i'm pumping it into tanks that the nuclear engines are able to access yes this is it this is also an unscripted video as you can see but um yeah i don't want to talk too much about i know a lot of people want me to do sort of in-depth tutorials or talking about how to fly these things but i really don't want to cover that too much because honestly if you if you need to have a tutorial on how to fly this thing then it's i don't i don't have to say this without sounding patronizing but it's probably not you're probably not ready to fly this no i'm gonna stop this sounds way too bad. Basically, if you want to get into flying SSTOs and things, you're much better off starting out with either a Mark II size or even just a single fuselage Mark III size. Uh, I myself have done two, uh, well, a two-part series of flying interplanetary SSTOs, um, part of the Phantom line, the Mark II. The first one is a very in-depth tutorial on how to get to Minmus, and the second one is a very in-depth but a little bit more hands-off tutorial on how to get to Juna. And in those videos, I cover not only the flight, but how to also get back to the runway from... Uh, eccentric orbits and inclined orbits and things like that so if you want to get used to the basics then follow that and then I have done various commentaries for my Argus line of like smaller than this one uh, SSCOs but uh, yeah so I don't want to talk about the flight plan too much with this but I will mention that because the thrust to weight ratio is so pitifully low because those nuclear engines really aren't very powerful and the dry mass of this thing is absolutely enormous we ended up doing uh, two burns at periapsis to get to the Mun just because it ended up being more efficient that way and um, actually that's it that's why we did two burns to the Mun um, but yeah but we end up in orbit with a load of Delta V so obviously this thing can go much much further than the surface of the Mun but I've noticed in the past that uh, well when I made my Odyssey SSTO which was a 40 seat thing it was originally designed to go to Juna but I thought I'll just make I'll just show it off by doing a quick mission to the Mun to prove that it worked, and then I'll make the Juno video, which is what it was designed for. Anyway, the mission where I took it to the Mun did extremely well, um, and it absolutely dwarfed the popularity that the subsequent Juno mission did. So I think from now on, whenever I do these big SSTOs, SSTOs like this, I'll um, I'll do it. I'll send it to the Mun first because I'm. It seems like you guys like seeing Mun SSTOs, and then I'll send them to a sort of air quotes more exotic location like Elu, Lath, or Juna or somewhere. So, you know, this thing. Um, it provided you mastered gravity assist. This can definitely get into orbit around Elu for most people. So, it has the power. Um, it's not without its flaws. Um, I think in hindsight I shouldn't have used those gigantic solar panels just because they are not very good when it comes to tolerating re-entry heat and things. But we didn't lose them or anything. The ship makes it back in one piece. Spoiler alert, I'm sorry. But uh, yeah, 
Anyway, uh, at this point, some of you may be wondering, Matt, you space plane savant, why are you burning... Why have you commenced your landing burn from such a high altitude? Surely it's much more efficient to start at a lower altitude to waste as little fuel as possible, burning away your vertical velocity. Wow, that was probably horribly fra fra phrased. That was a <laughs> perfect metaphor for that entire sentence, wasn't it? Uh, the reason is because the thrust weight ratio is so abysmal on this ship that you really... Maybe not quite as high as I did just in. By the way, there's an accidental monarch there <laughs> in the background. But uh, yeah, the problem is when you start at a lower altitude, um, this thing just can't slow itself down fast enough before it hits the surface. So I did have to start burning from quite a high altitude. Probably in hindsight, I it wasn't the altitude was too high. But like I say, this thing really isn't designed to just be able to go to the moon. It is designed to be able to do further away location so I knew I'd have a little bit of excess fuel regardless so I could be a bit more careless when it came to executing manoeuvres but uh, that's just one thing to bear in mind when you're dealing with these really huge aircraft that um, the rules you may be used to um, using when you're playing, SS um, playing Kerbal Space Program doesn't always apply when you're flying big space planes like this. Uh, luckily I also have a little bit of oxidizer left from the ascent so I can use some of that to kill off my vertical velocity just before I hit the surface um, so we can land. There was no, there was nothing else to that thought process. <laughs> but that just about wraps up the hardest part of this mission. Here we are just deploying the ladders. You don't need them on the mum, but this is just a proof of concept that if you were to take this some, this somewhere like Leif, uh, this doesn't have the Leif guarantee, I haven't tested it, but uh, it should be able to if you have a good grasp of how to use gravity assists and all of that. Um, but, uh... What was I going with this? Yeah, so lathe, you can't sort of use the jetpack. So then on places like that, the ladders would be useful. And here we are, just planting our flag, and we can begin our EVA, which took a very long time, so I'm not going to subject you to that entire thing. But uh, interesting fact, this video was actually going to be, well, not this video, but this ship was going to be the focal point of Expedition Eve Episode 5. Uh, in the end, I chose to make Expedition Eve Part 5 a Mun rover that kind of split in the middle and had a little cool lander, just because I haven't done that many rover missions, and also because the way I'm filming Expedition Eve is the is the, I'm doing it like a cinematic where there's no UI visible at any point apart from the odd map screen view, but even that's very minimal UI because I want it to feel more like a cinema, uh, cinematic film, um, like a machinima, whereas my previous series, Junior Attacks, I kind of wanted that to just look like a normal KSP mission. So the UI was visible because there was a lot of space planes, so you could easily replicate what you were seeing as well. It was basically just a series of missions with a little story going on in the background. Uh, but in my head it was kind of like the stories that you kind of make up in your own head when you're playing these games. So it was like the normal game but with things going on in the background. Does that make sense? Anyway, this would have been, a, I thought, I think, well I thought to myself that this would be a completely inappropriate thing to have for Expedition Eve because I know a lot of people would want to not only watch this video but also want to know like what the fuel levels were and what the Delta V levels were at each stage in the mission so that they could Maybe just either because they're very interested in that sort of thing or because they want to try and recreate the mission themselves. Um, either way, a series that doesn't have UI visible would not be the most uh, appropriate platform to demonstrate that, not only because it deprives the viewer of all, the, of all this key information, but it would also open the door for people to cry cheater and things because I've hidden the UI so people can't see me using infinite fuel or whatever. I mean, that's I'm, this, this won't stop that. There will be people in the comments that are claiming infinite fuel. I mean, there's no way I can <laughs> disprove that other than with this video and the craft file is in the description and you can test that out yourself and you will find hopefully that it can indeed do this mission so um, yeah that, but that's why this isn't part of Expedition Eve. Um, Expedition Eve is on a bit of a hiatus at the moment because this video kind of took precedence and I'm also working on a few other projects but Expedition Eve part 6, I was about to say part 5, part 6 is planned. I have actually sort of a rough script, not like a script, but a rough draft of what the overarching episodes will be. Probably will be about eight episodes long in total. Uh, it's not going to be anything big. It's going to be a similar in scope to Junior Attacks, but not obviously quite as long as Junior Attacks. And then following Expedition Eve, it'll probably go back to just doing standard mission videos, kind of like the one you're watching now. Uh, and then in the future, I've got a couple ideas for more series, but uh, that's for then. And uh, this is now. So, in order to get to the 
about to say, going back to the run then. In order to get back to Kerbin and subsequently the runway, we're going to be performing two aero brake maneuvers to lower our uh, orbit safely so we can re-enter the atmosphere without overheating. So we can actually lower our periapsis from here on the MUN, or in orbit around the MUN, to around 40,000 kilometers. Uh, and that should provide a safe altitude, we shouldn't have any overheating. By the way, this, uh, just for full clarification, this video is being filmed with 100% re-entry heating applied. There are no, there is no tomfoolery with the difficulty settings here. My only real regret with this SSTO's design really are those gigantic solar panels because uh, they do have um, a real tendency to overheat, but a little trick you can do is just by using a Q&E to induce a roll, you can prevent one part from being exposed to more heat than the other, if that makes sense. It distributes the heat more evenly across the ship if you do the roll. So while it's completely unrealistic, it works great in this game. So we're going to raise our uh, periapsis to around 50,000 uh, kilometers, 50,000 meters even for the second air break, because we don't need to do as much deceleration this time because our apoapsis is now a lot lower. Uh, and we can do a, f a few more rolls, but heating isn't really an issue this time around. And then we can go about getting our, not our encounter with the Kerbal Space Center, but getting our trajectory set up so we can get, um, so we can land on the runway basically. So I'm not using the trajectories mod here, and I never do. When it comes to sort of practicing landing at the Kerbal Space Center, the biggest thing is just to practice really. But one thing that I like to try and do, which you'll see in a minute on the map screen, is to make a maneuver node, which sets up your periapsis to be around 20,000 meters above that, directly above that peninsula to the east of the Kerbal Space Center. Obviously, your mileage will vary depending on the SSTO or rocket, I guess, that you're flying. Uh, but this is just kind of a good ballpark figure I tend to use, and then you can just adjust that accordingly, uh, depending on whether or not it works. So this is why quick save is a godsend for this sort of thing, really. If I didn't use quick save, then I don't think I would ever, ever be able to land at the runway. Occasionally I get lucky and get it first time, but usually it takes me a few attempts. Um, although this being said, I did actually get this one right first time, so, you know, um, don't listen to me sometimes. But here we are, just pitching our nose up just because this thing doesn't have any air brakes, so we're essentially using its entire body to slow ourselves down. Uh, really trying to make sure we're not going to overheat though, because obviously those solar panels in particular are incredibly susceptible to overheating. But we did a pretty good job here, we can just use those jet engines to, obviously they're not, those two on their own aren't powerful enough to propel us forward. We are still decelerating, but as we get closer to the runway, uh, we can start using the rapiers in air breathing mode just to get us the final way to our destination because we do still have over two and a half thousand units of liquid fuel left because like I say this thing is designed for more exotic locations than just the MUN so fuel isn't really an option here and here we are coming into land very nearly bodged that but uh, we did it so if you guys want to watch a music version of this video um, like that's more akin to my traditional SSTO videos then there is a link in the description and there is a link on the screen right now and that will take you there I highly recommend watching it I was really proud of the way it turned out and it's not monetized so I don't know why you would care about that actually but unfortunately it will be showing up in your sub boxes at some point over the next week sorry about that but I'll be making it public but uh, yeah enjoy the rest of your day and uh, good Goodbye.